here, some public comments. Uh, there's a lot on the agenda. We're gonna try and keep it uh, to the point and let everybody speak their piece, but probably not dilly-dally if we can help that. Um, first item of business is a public comment period for the Vermont Trans Bicycle and Pedestrian Program application for the sidewalk extension and access management at the north end of Main Street. Sure, Bill. Basically, uh, this is a project that we had applied for unsuccessfully back a few months ago under the B-Trans uh, Transportation Alternatives Program. And I did get uh, information about our scoring. And ironically, where we were, where we ended up being weak was they felt that our estimate was too low. I, I read that, yeah. I thought that was a little strange. But anyway. So what, uh, what we want to do if the City Council grants uh, authority would be to reapply for, in essence, that same project under the uh, bicycle and pedestrian program. Uh, the project is a, a combination sidewalk access management. Uh, I've, I've talked to Bob about this project to some, to some degree about improving access management in the north end of town so that curb cuts are much more defined so that it instead of having just a sea of gravel out there and no real identification of where pedestrians go or cross uh, so it's a, like I say it's a combination pedestrian and access management so uh, the estimate of this project uh, I think this is high but I'm gonna I think that we should this time maybe I don't know if they'll score us bad for having too high of an estimate, but, but anyway, uh, this project will be estimated at around $200,000. Versus? Versus 125. I think the original project was $25,000 in engineering and $100,000 in construction. Uh, I mean, I used, I used uh, information from the 2006 Wilbur Smith study that was paid for by VTrans with a, with a multiplier, if you will. That's okay. So, uh, so this time that we will make sure that there's enough money in the application, and so it would be a two hundred thousand dollar project, uh, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars in construction, forty thousand dollars in uh, engineering. I can tell you, engineering through VTrans is not a simple engineering process. They have some of their own. It's federal money is behind yeah. the scenes, so it's a little more complicated. Uh, so When's that do? one of the things that's, uh, that, you know, it didn't bother, never bothers me to lose anyway, r really. Uh, but anyway, this was one of the things that made this loss not too bad was that we applied for money under their 80-20 program, 80% 80 uh, state, 20% local. This program is 90-10. So actually our share is less uh, under this program at $200,000 and it would have been at 20% under the 125. Only you, Mel Holly, you could pull that off. I, but I did try. I really did right. try, trust me. <laughs> Good uh, for you. So anyway, what I would, uh, so basically what I'm looking for from the council is, author is authorization to submit this application under this program uh, on Friday uh, with the local share uh, which would, uh, you know, if it is twenty thousand dollars, that would come from the water tower fund. We well, it's our, it's, it's our local share. It's it, we have to have it in in hand, available. if you will. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's the great thing about that fund because we have it available, you know, when we need something like this on short notice, so they know the money's in hand. Right. So I make that motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on this? Uh, the reapplication. For the bike and uh, pedestrian program map. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Great. Go for it, Mel. Thank you. I suppose next year it's going to be 100%. Right. <laughs> we should wait. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't wait for that. Yeah. yeah. yeah all kinds of federal money. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, next, Jerry Ann Smart, president of the Regens Opera House. Yeah, Hi. Nice. We saw you a month ago. Yes, you did, and you've been busy. I'm going to pass this out. John, can I give sure. to you? So I'm handing around um, a list of your new team, the uh, board of directors of the Virginia's Opera House. We're 14 strong, and 
and uh, this is an incredibly diverse group of people who really genuinely reflect the people who live in this region. Um, parents of young kids, brand new parents, parents who've retired, business owners, bankers, insurance folks, uh, people who are in law. It's a really, really um, very great, rich group of people. And I'm really delighted to have them on board. And they're also extremely enthusiastic to be part of this reorganization process for Free Jones Opera House. But also, um, I had in my bulldozer way of um, getting folks to come on board and uh, help during this reorganization, I, I realized that not only do I need to populate the board with some folks who really reflect the community at large, but also we need to have someone who reflects the city council for us, as liaison, if you will, between the Opera House board and what we have going on and the city council. So when you have questions or anything, I won't have to come every time to a meeting, but you can just generally ask this liaison or to have the Opera House do in any news that you want to report. This person will also get all of our minutes and notes and they can come to any board meeting. They don't have any voting powers, but they certainly have a big say in, in what we need to um, kind of incorporate into, uh, into our thinking as we reorganize going forward. So my bulldozer style um, thought of Lynn Donnelly and I went ahead and asked her if she would be uh, okay with joining us in that capacity. She said yes, but in, as a respectful uh, process, I want to make sure that I ask your permission of that and let you, I guess you vote or decide if that's an appropriate person uh, to represent the council on our behalf as our liaison. And we really appreciate this. This is a really important step in the Opera House creating um, a communication bridge between what we're doing and what you need to know what we're doing, okay, and vice versa. And um, Lynn knows us really well. Uh, we know her. She's conservative and clear thinking. Um, and she has always the best interests of the city at heart. And so we felt like she was the best choice at this time. Do you want to put that forth? We need Great. a time for that. And um, do you want to do a motion first and I can suckle? Um, yeah, just, just as a quick aside, we talked briefly about this, about having representation with the city council and the Opera House board. And Mel and I talked about it. Jerry Ann and I talked about it. And if, if we had a member of this board on their board, we could envision potential conflicts of interest in terms of funding, budgets, whatever down the road. And we thought it was best not to have that close a relationship because they'd have to recuse themselves, obviously, from one board to the other. I think this is a good, happy medium where the communication line is there, but we, um, but we don't have to worry about the conflict of interest. So, Glenn, I, if you're willing to do it, works for me. I'll entertain a motion if, if uh, everyone wants to go that route or if you want I'll to start with a motion. motion to Second. Lynn be appointed as liaison, non-voting member to the Opera Jones Opera House board. First motion made, we'll second. second. Any further discussion? Lynn, do you want to share anything with us? You were on the board a long time I ago, was. weren't I you, was I thought? During the restoration of the project, so okay. this is a good okay. time to come back on, I guess. Okay. Anybody else have any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jerry Ann, in your bulldozer fashion for taking <laughs> care of that. I'm making great progress, Mayor, and um, we're right now in the needs of the situation mode in terms of uh, tackling issues at the Opera House. The next will be is forming committees to kind of go on to different things that we have to do to make it a really great organization. Then we'll be getting to specifics, but we're also going to be open door for Jen's Day, and we invite you all to be there. A survey is going out, and a lot of people are filling that out. Uh, Annie's actually right now at the pool doing more surveys oh, with good. folks. Um, she has collected more than 14 information from more than 14 organizations like the Opera House in the state. This is a rich document, this thick, that has given us a roadmap of maybe 15 different ways we can go in terms of how we're going to maybe structure the Opera House over the next couple of years. So um, it's been an incredible process. I think the other side of it when it got much stronger. Good. Okay. I noticed you had these members on Front Porch Forum yesterday, which is great, great because people now are going to know who they are, really what they represent, and so on. It's a good idea. Yeah. Getting a lot of great feedback, so good. Keep it. Okay. Thank you. Bill, I have I have one uh, Opera House topic uh, okay. that I want. I would like the board to. Uh, this will be in the form of a recommendation, because we because we're subject to an audit. Tell you our auditors come in and they read all of our minutes and, and they pose all kinds of questions to J Joan and and uh, and I about about money. That's what their job is. And uh, what I handed out to you uh, is 
basically the city side of the expenses as it relates to the sprinkler system project and it's you know helps to kind of describe the history of this project and, and uh, up at the top of this uh, report was uh, that thirty five thousand dollars just to give you a little bit of history to that when when they started this project it was estimated to be about a seventy to eighty thousand dollar project and the city decided that it would you know, it didn't make any sense to sprinkler the upstairs without sprinkling the downstairs, and so the city wanted to participate in this, and it was thought that the city would fund, would 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 pay about 25% of the cost, something like that. And they, there was a time when they were going to actually try to keep those costs clearly separated, which are really easy to say, but not easy, not easy to do in a construction project. So, but anyway, the city, uh, in, in essence, estimated its share to be about $20,000 out of that $80,000, roughly 25%. And then along came the, the surprise uh, of needing a fire pump to the tune of $20,000 or $25,000. And the city's share, uh, uh, the city council agreed to increase that share by $15,000 to the $35,000. So that's why you see uh, why you see two entries there is that there was $18,789 and some change that was in some city hall capitalization fund. We closed that out and then we took 16000 plus of some water tower money together with that to make the $35,000 and we were in essence off and running and the Opera House had grants and cash to, to, fund, the, uh, to fund the balance of the project. And then when cash became problematic for the Opera House, uh, they, uh, they came to the city to see if the city could front some remaining cost of this project in light of the fact that there was a $20,000 grant upon completion from Vermont Arts Council and $32,588 in tax credits upon completion of the project. The city Council voted to front, if you will, up to $52,500 to completion of this project. And this project is now 99% complete. We passed the pressure test that was on my desk the other day. Uh, the problem is for the Opera House is that I can't get Alpine Sprinkler back to Virgins until September and therefore the $20,000 grant and the $32,588 is only available upon, com ab not 99% complete, but 100% complete. And so what I'm uh, recommending is that uh, there, I'm gonna say that there are no more costs, Jerry Ann, I, there are not supposed to be any more costs, would be for the city to front, uh, if you will, or to go ahead and pay the Opera House uh, the, the 15605 to help them get back on their feet financially, they were going to end up there anyway. And what would happen is, is when, when uh, Alpine does return and they do the certification and the grant funds and the tax credits, and we basically figured this whole thing out here uh, recently, when that money comes in in September, October, uh, the city will be paid back. And so, we found the tax credit certificate. It's still in the tax department, apparently. Yeah. Is that right? We think we've we have a person that checked the files. Like uh, Caitlin, something or other. Uh, Leanne didn't know a lot about it, but Caitlin did. Caitlin emailed me and said that she looked in a file. It's like we couldn't get the. We had this application and we had this newspaper article, and there was this. Where is the certificate? We could we couldn't figure out, but we we think that we're all set. It was something that the board. The downtown transportation board did award back in June or July of 2009. We think it's real. It was in the Addison Independent, so it's got to be <laughs> got to be real. So anyway, it's just upon completion. They give us their the state gives us certificate. We give that to the National Bank of Middlebury. They cut a check to the Friends of the Virgins Opera House for $32,588. Vermont Arts Council. Grant reimbursement goes into then upon completion. They sent a check to to the Friends of Virgins Opera House for twenty thousand dollars. Those two those two amounts of money land, and as soon as they get them, they give them you back did. to us. As long as everybody feels 
good about that. And there's a check, part of the, one of the checks in the warrants is a check for 15,605.62 to uh, uh, hopefully be released tomorrow. To Do you promise <laughs> to write us a check for $52,000? Okay, that's good. And if, and if there's a shortfall, it comes out of Mel's paycheck, yeah. because obviously, you know, he feels pretty comfortable about this. Not an issue. So. Not an issue. Right. Mel and I talked about this, and, and given this, we, we know that you have, like, a negative, <coughs> and, and probably it's going to take about four to five weeks to find, you know, get this all put together and have the money roll, so. A board member Susan Schaefer right behind me is a financial whiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she is now, and uh, she's going to be helping us figure all that Excellent. stuff out. She's okay. cracking the code. Excellent. So Okay. <laughs> so Mel and I talked about this, and I said, do you feel comfortable with this? And he said, I do. Well, once I figured out where the money was, I, right. that, was that was a little... So, <laughs> you know, is there any discussion on this, or, or are we all in agreement? It is in the warrants, and probably sure you didn't see it in the yeah. warrants either. No, we but did. You did, good. Okay. So do we need a motion? I don't think so. It's in the warrants, and we signed it. But I did, we wanted to make sure that you knew what it was in case, you know, Questions. anyone has questions about it. Yeah, so I think as long as the minutes reflect something about the release of those dollars yeah. and the understanding that upon they receipt of those proceeds that pr they pay back, I think mm -hmm. Teresa will be fine. So that the process is laid out in, yeah. in, in right. the minutes. Okay, right. good. Okay, are you all set? I'm all set. Are you all set? I'm all set. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Okay, moving on. Robert, first time. How are you? All right. Robert is the owner of Kennedy Brothers Marketplace property on North Main Street. Um, your wife, you were a Kennedy. Your wife yes. was a Kennedy, so yes, okay. And Kennedy. very good, nice to meet you. I don't think we've met before. Yes, but, um, and I know that you have plans and so on, and I think that you're here to talk about maybe what you're hoping to do, how we can work together on some aspects of it and so on. Is that right? Sure. Great. Well, let me, let me say a few words. Thank you. Uh, Your owners at this point, and so far things are going good. We have two new tenants, a chocolate maker, and it's delicious vegan chocolate, utterly divine. It's almost, uh, you know, heresy here in Vermont, but you know, <laughs> somebody eats it, and uh, it's quite delicious. I've had some, and she's already moved in, though she's actually going to be changing space to a permanent location after I do a little fix up. And the construction started today for the third floor of the atrium. We're getting a wholesale jeweler in there. Mm -hmm. And of course, you probably all know we're trying to get a jewelry store. I'm sorry, a grocery store. A grocery store <laughs> on the first floor of you know, the brick building. So uh, that's progressing a little more slowly than we'd like. But uh, you know, we feel confident it's going to happen. All right. And uh, so in terms of what we want to do, obviously, we wanna, you know, we're slowly going to, you know, do the renovations, repairs on the building, fix up the space internally. We're gonna have a bunch of office space. We have the grocery store, we have the two health clubs, and pretty much the rest of the space I expect is gonna be office space. So it'll be about, about 12,000 square feet total of office space. We're also talking to someone who wants to have a restaurant on the property. We wanna have about a 3,000 square foot restaurant. You know, we're in discussions, nothing signed yet, but it sounds very promising right now. So to accomplish all this and make everybody happy in terms of the customers coming to the building, and Mel showed you a little picture there, you probably know there's the old Route 22A that's been the Kennedy Brothers parking lot for 54 years now. And prior to that, I'm sure it was a parking lot for whatever dairy or creamery was in there before that. And it's a, uh, obviously it's a discontinued road. And I was talking to Mel last week and he thought it would be a good idea if we just went through the process and moved it over to Kennedy Brothers so that my tax bill would go up. <laughs> I'm sure that was somewhere in, in the back of Mel's mind. <laughs> but it, one of the reasons I want to do that is the grocery store needs a paved parking lot. Of course, people aren't going to push a shopping cart over gravel. And obviously right now it's all gravel, so what I want to do basically is pave all of that and make it a parking lot. And since it's, I don't know if it's a city highway or state highway or what it is, but um, I probably could do that. No one's going to object, but it's still, you know, we thought it'd be better if 
and went through the official process of transferring the land to the Kennedy Brothers. So that's it. And in addition, we'll be paving more around the side of the building and um, probably have to tear down some of the existing, the old buildings, the tin building at the south end of the properties. Unfortunately, it does not meet the code since it was built like 45 years ago. So that's going to have to go and be replaced by something else. But. So that's uh, hopefully a, a, a nice overview of uh, what we're up to and you know, what we're particularly interested in discussing right now. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Bill, one of the things I, uh, and just so that you know what everybody else has, Bob, is I, I have, thanks for sending this, this yeah. to me so that everybody has this, this plan here and, and contained within this plan, there are some dotted lines there attempting to show, you know, the approximate location of the city right away. What I did is I took that map and, and basically superimposed it on this map here and did a little coloring. Uh, uh, this is the old, the base map of this is the Vermont Railway base map. And basically what happened in, in 1905 when the original underpass was constructed, because obviously roofs, old Route 7 used to go right across the railroad tracks and you headed to Bur down Meg's Road and uh, you know, uh, heading to Burlington, that was the route. And in 1905 uh, was when they created the first underpass. And that poor order, uh, based what it did, incorporated in that order was that the portion of the public highway that uh, intersects with the railroad is to be forever abandoned. So you have this parallelogram, if you will, right here, is where the city's right of way ceased and then picks back up uh, over on Meg's Road. And, uh, and so this kind of leftover right of way, if you will, uh, certainly not, not of immediate obvious use by the city just kind of got left behind. That's what it did. Now, let me just uh, let me tell you that, uh, as I explained to Bob, <clears throat> relative to zoning and relative to rights of way, if somebody wants to make improvements to private property, you know, they need to get zoning permits and they work through the Development Review Board. Uh, also, our sign regulations, signs have to be on your own property. And I can tell you that the sign over there, Kennedy Brothers, has been, been within the city right away for 54 years, all right, or thereabouts, okay? So that's just been, you know, not looked at. But, I, but the, the point is, is that there, there has always been problems with, with Kennedy Brothers parking lot being portion of which being within within the city right of way and obviously if uh, Bob were to come forward with an application to the DRB the DRB doesn't have any jurisdiction over over the road all right and so he ends to do this work he, he would need to uh, get whatever approvals are needed from the DRB but also obtain either a license agreement through the City Council to construct you know, permanent improvements out there, or uh, or possibly go through the abandonment of a public highway, and you, and where the city would actually relinquish relinquish the rights. All right. So, uh, kind of two things to me. One is is you know on Friday we're putting in an application for a sidewalk extension project and access management, and so hopefully we will get that funded and that will be totally engineered. So one of the things that I don't, I would not want to do is get ahead of, get ahead of that design. You know, I think that we, you know, it's fine that, that Bob has had Peter Morris design this. That's good, good to know. But we need to design our pedestrian way and access management out into that area. So I don't really see how you can move forward with definitively uh, on, uh, uh, on this tonight anyway. Uh, the other thing is, is I would suggest that the council hold a, conduct a site visit also to go over and really get their, wrap their arms around where, where things are located uh, so that there's a better, there's a better idea of what is being proposed. So one is to give it up. The other is to 
have what an agreement a long-term agreement well we we do issue license agreements for you know lots of times they're very simple you know Green Mountain Power wants to hook a security cable to the bridge that's a license agreement I mean there's a revocable license agreement for them to do improvements uh, there we have a license agreement with uh, I, I think he signed it Joan relative to the shade roller annex never signed it okay so anyway there is a license agreement um, in front of the Black Sheep Bistro, that plaza in front of the back Black Sheep Bistro. Um, does that encroach that, into the right of way yes, a little and, bit? Yes, and, and, and huh. there's a license agreement in order to have built that. A real, a, a real license for, for the construction side, mm -hmm. yep. okay? So that's, uh, so that, anyway, that's the point. When somebody really wants to build something within a city right of way of a more permanent nature, that is what, what at a minimum should happen there should be some kind of a license agreement to allow that construction and understand the responsibilities if are those agreements short term long term uh, how revocable they, is, they end up being yeah. but that doesn't yeah. give Bob a lot of a lot of comfort if he's going to be spending some money if it's revocable I'm just wondering if there's a way you could put a term in it uh, I'm trying to remember the license agreement in front of the black sheep bistro it, it does have a term and it's it's fairly long um, but Who do, the, who's that signed with? Well, originally it was with Dave Austin because he owned the building. He built the building, right? Um, and um, the the only concern I have um, with the license agreement, even though I tend to want to keep city properties of so that we have access for utilities or whatever, um, is that um, that plaza I think was built without without financing it. And so I don't know whether a license agreement would pass the muster if somebody had to finance doing a project because of the duration. And revocable. Yeah, and revocable. Right. Revocable would do uh, kill every so, there, yeah. So the but if option- But if it was over, if it was over 20 years, if the agreement was for over 20 years, it would be financeable, I would think. Mm -hmm. Because it'd be longer, longer it would have term. to be a 25 yeah. or 30, it'd have to be longer yeah. than the 20. Um, I mean, and then it, it would be financeable. Yeah, I mean, obviously there are a lot of questions here. It, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves spending time on something that may change a little bit in the future. But I think a site visit makes sense. You're, so you're looking at, at doing some work. You know what we're doing. It'd be nice if, if at some point, Sure, I want to coordinate. Everybody can coordinate, so Absolutely. we know what we can do and what you don't have to do, and you can work around that. Right. Um, I mean, my feeling is that obviously we want to have the, the, the property developed. We want it to, to you know, be successful and pay taxes like every <laughs> every local government wants. And, and I, think I you, want that too. And you need the parking space. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's sure. inherent. It, it, it's it's critical that you have that parking space. And as long as we can work out some type of an agreement, I think we need to maybe talk. You know, with a bank, maybe with a town attorney briefly, do some research. Is that what you were thinking, Mel? Well, or? let me just tell you that, you know, to the procedure for abandoning a right of way, you know, is, you know, it's not unbelievably complicated, but it does involve, you know, notice. It's a legal process. Yeah. It's something I, I can't handle it. You'd have to have the city attorney yeah. handle the official abandonment and the whole notice requirements. For that uh, and obviously there's you know it costs you know I, and I can tell you in the uh, I think that a survey is required I don't know that for certain but anyway there's a roadmap in the statute about uh, you know laying it's a statute called laying out altering or discontinuing a public highway that's the statute it's entitled 23 or 19 or whatever whatever it's in and it's a roadmap to do this and I can tell you that you know, if you if you were thinking about going down going that going down that road, you know, I, I think we ought to know what the no cost is going to be. You know, yeah. and it, was that no, no pun, pun intended. intended? No pun intended. <laughs> because I can tell you, there are costs involved. Yeah. All right. Does this have to go in front of the voters? No, because it's not the selling of real estate. It's okay. different, Zig. It's it's it is a it's you know it, you feel like you are selling real estate. But, but you're getting but nothing a, in return. <laughs> but there's really, you know, it's a statute that is that yeah. uh, that 
is very specific about align, you know, realignment and discontinuance of a public highway. Because one of the, the reasons why it's a process is the, when you discontinue a highway, the land that it was taken from, it, you know, when it was laid out, that's who it goes back to. Okay, so it's not like, the, you know, uh, <coughs> we don't know specifically who owns under that 99 feet. And let me just tell you, when I said 99 feet, it's not crystal clear that it is 99 feet, okay? And so, you know, really, this is not a simple, you know, process. It, it can be a little complicated and it can but, be, but let me just can make cost some money. I'm happy to have a license, you know. I mean, if, if, if the council decides to do an abandonment of the highway and you know give it to Kennedy Brothers, whatever that process involves, okay, but I'm happy to go with a license too. So I, I don't okay. have a preference. I just want it legal so that when I say, all right, I want to build a parking lot here, sure. someone can say sure. yes, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Randy, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, does the uh, right of way continue on the other side of the railroad track? Meg's Row, yes. yes. No, I mean right, right up against the track. Just like you see it right there, Randy. Right? Like Me so Meg's down. Row, the right of way on Meg's Row. Yeah. Now I can tell you, the city went through an altering of Meg's Roads. Meg's Road <laughs> used to be a 99 foot ride road. And it actually is now, I'm gonna say now it's a 66 foot wide road. And all of that reduction came from the westerly side. Mm -hmm. It's not like it took a rod and a half on that side and, or, and, or 16 and a half feet on that side and 16 and a half feet on that side. The city uh, narrowed the right of way. Now, it, in a, and we can pull the survey out. It, it may not even be that straight. It may be like a notch. Mm -hmm. When the city altered that right of way, it might have altered it such that it just made it around Hutt's house, Stanley Hutt's house, mm -hmm. because part of that house was within the was yeah. within the road. I think that's how it's done. But no, the city still has this right of way leading right up, up to right up to the right up to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I, that's the concern I have about um, the aspect of letting it go and the fact that is there. I know the ra railroad is very difficult with anything with, with their tracks, but uh, whether. Well, sometime in the future, we, we need to get some u utility access, uh, which would go under the railroad track. And there's, I mean, there's the right of way that goes right through there, uh, which would allow that. Um, but I, because I'm there is actually sewer that goes through there, there is water that goes through there. I know, there's, there's a sewer line there. right on the other side of that. Right, exactly. That, uh, well, it might be nice to be able to have to access you know, that if need be. Um, but uh, I guess I could go with a licensing agreement if that if that works if it works, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I guess I would I would like to be able to have Mel maybe check into the license, mm -hmm. check into the black sheets, mm -hmm. check into some other licenses. Maybe VLCT has some kind of a uh, information on on different types of licenses that might fit this criteria, and we bring it back to the to the the agenda in the next meeting or two once we find out where we're at, and then we can invite you back and discuss it and you can talk to Mel and then once we get to a point where we're going to make a decision, you know, we can, we can do that. Sounds good. I have another question. Yeah. Just actually a question of, of you. Um, how much, how much do you need to know now related to doing <laughs> f your future project? Because, I don't, uh, well, you know, do, I mean, do we need to move faster or I mean, do you need to have an indication even tonight that to say that we are willing to do something? We don't know what that is yet, but we are willing to do something, uh, you know, in the development. All I need is you're willing to do something. In, in terms of timing, I mean, really, the, the parking lot is to serve the grocery store, right? My current tenants don't need a paid parking lot. The grocery store will. So it really depends on when I sign a lease with the grocery store, and then it's going to be at least three say four months till they open. So four months after lease signing, I have to have a parking lot form. So we're probably talking November. I, or a decision has to be made before that to plan it. Sorry. What about the sign? 
That's a, that that's has a nothing to do with this, with this board. Yeah. <laughs> your, your plans are going to propose uh, mid-October, early November, depending on how late the season is. Oh, you mean in terms of when Maybe. they get paid? Maybe. All right, so that's sort of when I would probably have, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm being optimistic that I'm going to sign the lease, yeah. you know. Yeah. If I don't, then it will could be next spring. Well, but we have, <laughs> we have at least another couple of meetings anyway, I think, okay. before you know. To, to give you an indication as to where yeah, as long as I know you're willing to do something so we can you know pave it you know. and if you find something out next week we'll I'll let know you, and we'll, I will let we'll, know. we'll know if we have to you know fast track we'll it or see whatever. an article in the Addison Independent too. <laughs> okay how's that sound right. does that sound all right we'll we'll keep it on the agenda we'll do some research and we'll <coughs> be in touch with you okay thank you very much good thanks Okay, number three, approval of minutes. Oh, Mike, yep. Yeah, I uh, just want to extend my thanks publicly to three uh, businesses that have uh, generously donated to the Lake in the Falls, River Gens, uh Animal Hospital, uh, Small City Market, and uh, Jackman Fuels. Uh, I urge uh, those that did get letters to continue to uh, send as little or as much as they could. Uh, we still got a ways to go. I was in touch with uh, uh, GMP today, uh, and they didn't have a decision yet, so I'm waiting there. And I would even ask the citizens if they were interested in making donations, uh, send a check to City Hall, uh, in uh, with uh, address as the uh, Regents Falls Lighting 2013. And one other thing, um, and I don't know who wants to ask this one. It's kind of blindsiding in. Um, we understand that the website's going to go under some construction or reconstruction, maybe, um, and we're hearing that um, there's going to be limited businesses listed on the website, and we're very concerned that it's not a, it would, we feel, my wife and I feel very strongly that it would not be fair to not list everybody. It's either don't list anybody or list everybody. The idea of having everybody on there was free advertisement, but also put the names out there. We understand there's a concern about the maintenance of that portion, and we haven't pursued uh, what is involved in the maintenance. So <clears throat> I, we, we would like to get off ground zero and, and, and get that moving if it's gonna go. And I've told Mel that I would like to put a committee together to just review it, the, the entire website, in terms of um, making it easier to, to navigate. To, um, Jeff and what's his wife's name? Carrie. Carrie, his girlfriend. Carrie put some bike loops on there yep. with my permission recently, which I think is a great idea for recreation. I've heard comments pro and con about the businesses, yep. and I think actually that's something that may be discussed tonight. Um, so I think, in, and I fully intend to ask you and your wife to be on the committee if you'd like to, just to talk about it. Because I think it's, we're not gonna do any wholesale changes, but I'd like to be able to go back and visit it and make it as good as we possibly can. I agree with you 100%, Bill. We need to stay on top of this. Uh, it's ever changing. Um, and we, we wanna be the latest, the greatest, and yep. up front. So yep, yep. yep. Good, okay. Thank and thank you for your work with the falls and so on. Unfortunately, it's been hard to get down there in the last month. Um, I've been down beautiful. a couple yeah. of times. It is absolutely stunning. Yeah. Stunning. Um, really there. beautiful. I'm going to, as the nights, uh, the darkness comes a little bit earlier, I'm gonna ask uh, Ben to kind of bring the front end, bring it from nine o'clock back to, uh, you know, I'll watch it in a couple weeks. It's gonna go until uh, late Day weekend. Good, okay. So, by all means, everybody, get out and see the falls. Go Niagara. There you go. Good. Thank you, Mike. So we're, excuse me, we're going to discuss the website further. Well, I was just going to talk time. about it, but if, okay. if you want to talk about it now, we can. I mean, I was just going to announce that I have a few names and I want to ask a few other people to, to create this committee. Well, I, uh, I think that Mike's comments about the business uh, may have come from me. And okay. I, can, I can tell you the genesis of that. Um, my wife, who is the manager of Tapestry Midwifery, attempted to have her business placed on the website and was told by the developer, 
we're not accepting any businesses outside of downtown. Everybody else has to just go to the, the uh, Addison County Chamber. We're just gonna put a link for downtown businesses only and a link to the Addison County Chamber of Commerce. And that's the message that she got back. Okay. And so <clears throat> certainly a, a, a medical practice, especially one like that, they track people from literally from all over the state. I mean, yeah. people come from Randolph, Rutland, and New York to visit that practice. And so, you know, people moving in especially look for that kind of care as well. So she was, you know, she was curious about that. And I contacted Mike because at the time I believe Mike and well, it, in my opinion, it has to be all or nothing. You, you can't, exactly. there's no middle ground. It's, you gotta be fair to everybody, right, and right. It's, it's either all or nothing. <coughs> and, and how you do all, we'd have to discuss. We have them all on there at one time, and slowly, somehow, they've been disappearing or being taken, taken off. Yeah. And we just, if there's a selection process, put that process out there so we can figure out how people are going to qualify. I don't know of any other municipal site that has businesses on it. Get it all. But they don't. They don't. Well, there's a reason they don't because it's really not city business. It, it, it isn't. But we got to think outside the box. We want to sell our city. Yeah. And part yeah. of the things that make the city work are the businesses within. So if we can bring the people into the city, then it only helps support the local businesses and the town or the city in the end. Randy, the um, yeah, a lot of uh, municipal sites do have links though. Um, so that, in effect, the businesses are there. They may not be the one that's actually maintaining it, uh, but there's a link so that you can get all that information about all the businesses that are in that particular municipality. I know the, the previous website, which is the one that actually I got, um, we did have all of the businesses listed, but it was, a, it was an awkward t to try and keep the thing updated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, <clears throat> Well, I don't I mean I don't think we need to. It is something we need to discuss and to continue discussing until we come up with a conclusion. So I think, but, but I think that's I think that's fine. I think it's. Uh, I think we agree that th there's probably a solution. We just need to figure out what it's going to be. So, okay. Uh, minutes. Somebody make a comment on the minutes. All right. I'll make a comment. But do, first, do you need a motion? Oh, motion for the minute to accept the minutes. I'll make that motion. Randy made it. Second. second it. Second. Wool's going to second it. Any discussion? Yeah, there is um, a correction that needs to be made if I can find it. Yes. Under comments, it says Mayor Daniels thanked all of you. <laughs> 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 so I told the former mail. And, and, other, and other than that, I, I don't recall him being Sorry. at the meeting, but. <laughs> I had a good chuckle when I saw that, John. That's okay. Other all than right. that, I think it's okay. We'll, we'll accept that correction, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. And warrants, we've done. Oh, citizens' Randy. comments. Randy Randy's going to abstain. He wasn't here. Although Randy said he, could, he can vote if he's read them, but he chooses not. Read too thoroughly. Uh, no more citizen comments. Appointment of Planning Commission members. We have two boards that need to be reappointed, and the list of the members are in the packet. Is that right? Yep. I think the only person I haven't heard from officially is Lowell. <laughs> I know that. Other, other than he wants his address changed. So if he, if he wants his address changed, yeah. I think that means he wants to stay on as a. Uh, okay. Uh, well, if I'm going to be listed, at least yeah, get right. the address. <laughs> and 40 that's fine. West Main Street. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One of the things, Bill. We're able to update it doesn't really make problems any problems with the website, and it can't be fixed until at least tomorrow. What'd you say? Yeah, I kind of heard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was going to say something about the fact that the planning commission has five members who's who expire in thirteen, and that's and it's like we ought to correct that, but really we don't need to correct it, and that's because typically the planning commission operates with seven members and so right now we have this five and three group but uh, and I think it was because you know, two people came forward and, and it's happened in the past that as opposed to selecting one of two the council selected both of them because a planning commission can be between three people and nine people so so the point I'm getting at is that everybody 
the, the five people on the Planning Commission whose terms are due to expire August 1, if it's the Council's pleasure, pleasure that all five of them would receive two-year appointments to 2015, okay. you know, or one of them one of them stays back a year in school. <laughs> but it really doesn't make any, it really doesn't make any difference to me. Okay. I make a motion that we, we appoint the five members with their terms uh, renewing August 1st, 2015. 15. To, to, to 15. To 15. Excuse me. Motion made. Second. 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 Is there any seconded discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Okay. Thank you. Let me go to the DRV. Yeah, all uh, the, uh, the you know, Rakow uh, Brent Rakowski, Rappaport, and Don Peabody, all, and Jason Farrell, all expressed interest in continuing on for two more years if the council so chooses. Okay. Motion? And, and Lowell. With, uh, we, we pulled Lowell out of retirement here. Ziggy. I was going to say, you yeah. never really took his name off. Well, I, no, <laughs> but on. actually, Lowell went to the last meeting. Uh, uh, he's been sp spilling in for a couple of reasons. One, because Brent Rakowski is the engineer on the police station project, so he had a conflict, a conflict of interest there. And Alex McGuire is about ready to have an, a baby, so we know <laughs> that she's going to be out. So, uh, Lowell, I've asked Lowell to reserve the first Monday of every month here for a while to just show up so so is it the same kind of motion yes yeah I'll make Ready. a motion to um, uh, renew their terms until August 1 of 2015 of those who are now expiring August 1 2013 okay Second. for the development review board second discussion all in favor uh, aye, aye. aye. I'd like to thank those members. Um, I think we have fa fabulous boards. I know that you're really happy with both of them. Yeah, you can't have any of them. We're really lucky to have them on these boards, and I'd like to thank them for all the, put, the time they put into those boards. Um, okay, um, don't get scared by the next one. But Mel and I were talking about things to, to put on the on future agendas, and one of the things that <coughs> he brought up to me, which I wasn't aware of, was the fact that we have we have 15 ordinances in the city, and many of them have not been updated in many years. Um, we're talking three, five, 10 years conceivably. Um, and we thought it would be a good opportunity over the next few months to try and take these, maybe have a member or two pick one or two and slowly work through these over the winter. Try and get them updated, try and have everybody you know, understand what is included in them, um, why they are what they are, and, and really kind of just, it's an exercise for us and for the community. So we have, this is a list of all the ordinances. Um, and what I'd like you to do just from here on out is to look at them, you know, what they entail, are there one or two or three that maybe you would like to be, would be interested in helping to review at some point in the future. Um, we've got, you know, traffic ordinances, Obviously, we'd like to have the chief involved in that. Um, things like licenses and regulations. I'm not sure if anyone would, you know, peddlers and itinerant photographers. You know, <laughs> but that's, we probably might want to update that, but again, well, I don't know. One of, just to give an example, one of the problems that we currently have with that very, those first two with peddlers and vendors is we have an ordinance that makes specific reference to statutes. And the problem is, is that They're the statutes have been, have been, repealed. been repealed. Oh, they have been repealed. Okay, okay. so that's why you don't, you don't really want to write an ordinance that way. If you yeah. want to regulate vendors, you have the right to do so and regulate them. You don't regulate them by some Someone statutory definition, yeah. you know, yeah. because that ends up going. So that, in, in you look at street sidewalks and parks, you know, I would like to be on that. I assume Joe might because he's um, on the rec committee. <laughs> Dogs and pets, perfect for Joe. <laughs> and actually, you know, some of these, some of these have been updated. They're in good shape. You know, the yeah. dog ordinance has already been taken You're care of. Okay. Indecency has been taken care of. Noise has been taken care of. But the, some of the ones like parks, uh, motor, the motor vehicle, uh, 
uh, some of the other ones really they have not been looked at for years so what so. we'll try and do is come up with those that need to be updated we'll put them on an agenda in the future probably in the fall and then we can actually decide which ones we're going to work on but I just I wanted to put it out there today so you knew what was coming down the road so uh, yeah Rennie. I'm just wondering whether in the review of this whether we can get any assistance that we don't have to pay extra for I just want to add that from the um, uh, League of Cities and Towns. Um, the, um, there may be some suggested wording. Um, they may be actually be able to look through it and say, okay, this statute no longer applies. Um, uh, we may be able, to be able to get some assistance from them. I think we, if we can, let's do that first and have them give us the recommendations. And, then we can and maybe they'll be able to set priority on some yeah. of them too. Yeah, good yeah. idea. Okay, good. So we'll we'll work on that as uh, shortly. Uh, Mel, you're up. City manager's report. Sure. Uh, yeah. Relative to the police station bond sale, I included in your packet a notice that went out in uh, that is coming out in the August 5th uh, newspaper, uh, which uh, this is a process that certainly the Merchants Bank will be involved with, but any other banking institution in the country can bid on our can bid on our bonds. So I wanted to just let you know about know about that, and uh, also to to let you know that we may have to move quickly. And I know that at one point we thought about only having one meeting in August, but we may have to have one full meeting in August, but also a special meeting just to deal with this bond. This bond selection. So anyway, so that's in process. Uh, if we were to go with something other than the municipal bond bank, uh, item B, uh, the the 2013 trial balance. I know that's 19 pages of, of numbers there for you. Uh, we've gone through this procedure there. Uh, maybe Lynn, before you came on board, so that people had a better, kind of a better understanding of where all of our funds are. And obviously, you know, we operate nine funds. The 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 busy one, if you will, with all of the various funds is Fund Nine. That's where the Donnelly Fund, the the, um, uh, the Watershed Fund, the, the Davison Fund, and all reappraisal fund. All of those are. And actually, we've done all of the journal entries required of that fund. So when you look at it. The fund balance is at the bottom. That was the starting point at the on July 1, 2012. The revenue and expenses are shown there, and then the assets up on the top shows you where you're at on uh, uh, as of July 1 of the current year. All of those journal entries have been done. Another one thing I'd like to note is under Fund 6. Uh, fund 6 is where our revolving loan fund is. And obviously, we had two loans. We have two loans with sheer cuts, and of course, the initial loan with the Maynard Building. And everybody's making payments. Even we didn't expect to see any money from the Maynard this year, but they sent us a check for four thousand dollars. Sheer Cuts has made made their payments in a timely manner. So the revolving loan fund has forty-eight thousand dollars and some change up there. So uh, you know, if there's that, that's good. That uh, you know, if there is. I can tell you, uh, you know, we the, the second loan with Sheer Cuts was a a third mortgage against the real estate, and I you know, I'm not a banker, but I I'll take a third place on a on a piece of real estate than a first place on a bad business any any day. So it's you know <laughs> you know so anyway, that's at least one of those loans is is protected by real estate. You know, everything else, as I mentioned before, we're in good uh, we're in good uh, standing. I. I think I gave everybody this other spreadsheet, Ray Rennie. I think that's the one you've got there. Mm -hmm. We're not quite done yet because you'll notice that there's two TBDs uh, there, one of them dealing with delinquent taxes, and I ran a report before I came back here. Uh, and last year, our <coughs> delinquent taxes were, as of August 31st, 2012, was $25,805, and right today, our delinquent taxes are 44416 So we're $19,000 on the wrong side at this point in time, but it's July 23rd. 
the, 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 the real important date is August 31st, all right? So, you know, bills have been put out, notices, letters, you name it. I've, I've done everything I can do, and everybody out there, and there's not a, a lot, you know, there's probably only, you know, 25 or 30 delinquent accounts of taxes. It's, it's not a, a, it's not a list of 100 people. It's a fairly short list. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, it, it'd be great if we don't lose ground, right? As long as we don't lose ground, that'd be good. But obviously, we got $19,000 to go uh, in that regard. The, the other TBD is payables, and that's why the warrants are kept in two different piles. I haven't totaled it up. Uh, but I can tell you it's probably about $15,000. There's about $15,000 worth of bills that are in that stack that are really June purchases or like in the case of the electric bill for electricity we used in June and the, the auditors make us put that back into the correct fiscal year. So if you take, let's say that worst case scenario, we didn't collect a dime in delinquent taxes between now and August 31st, not a dime. So that's a $19,000 uh, adverse effect on our fund balance and then you got about fifteen thousand dollars worth of payables so you have a total of thirty four thousand dollars so let's say that that's kind of our worst case so that hundred ninety nine thousand dollar projected fund balance because of the payables and the uh, uh, potential poor shape and delinquents that reduces that by thirty four thousand gets you down to 165 okay we're using 135 in our budget, all right? So, you know, we're okay, you know, but, you know, I, I kind of look 365 days out and think, well, you know, we're okay today, but, you know, next year we're, uh, it'll be <coughs> difficult to match that, match that 135. So, okay. so let's, uh, let's hope that the delinquents uh, come in uh, well between now and, and August 31st. Good. Uh, let's see. Any other topic of interest? No. Me. You want to talk yeah. Let me. Uh, so, you've got the new budget. There wasn't any activity. Let me just tell you that the the new budget, when all of the wage adjustments were were made, you know, and I think we talked about a fund balance use of maybe 135 or 140. The wage adjustments and benefits ended up being 24,810 dollars, and put that into the budget. And so we did not use that full penny and a half bill that we that we talked about, and so that's what set that fund balance carryover need of 135 versus 140. So it's uh, so Great. 63 and a half cents is what we uh, is what we build out. So that's that. The other now I'm down to two two topics. One is the certificate of public good was issued relative to our solar uh, array at the sewer plant the other day. I'm supposed to be meeting with Chad tomorrow to to finalize that agreement, and uh, so hopefully we'll see some we'll see some activity down there uh, this fall. Uh, relative to the police station, you saw in the warrants that we bought. We were the proud owners of Eight Main Street. Uh, bought that last uh, last week. Uh, one of the liens didn't get taken care of, and that's why there's a fourteen thousand dollar. Uh, check that's put into an escrow account to take care of uh, uh, one of the liens and there's a there's actually an escrow agreement that we have with Broadfoot as it relates to that and they have 90 days to clean that up and if they don't clean it up in with 90 days we we clean it up for them by cutting a check to uh, uh, to the company the uh, I think the, the balance is like 12,000 and some change or whatever they think that they can get it less Good for them. So anyway, that's how that's how we ended up handling that that one lien. <clears throat> I'm in the process of getting uh, quotes from uh, for, to do a pre-demolition asbestos inspection. Regardless of whether or not we tear the building down or burn the building, uh, we have to have a an asbestos uh, inspection. So we'll we'll I'll be able to select that tomorrow. It's not one of the bids is under a thousand dollars. The other two were over. So it's not it's not a huge not a huge expense, so that's that's in the works. The uh, another check that you see uh, uh, makes us think about boy, our permits aren't very expensive. The uh, the state permit on that police station is six thousand eight hundred and forty five dollars. So that's another one of the <laughs> one of the warrants. Uh, so that's going to be going in, and the 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 I don't want to call it brown brown groundbreaking 
at this point, but certainly bread loaf mobilization will occur the day after Labor Day. And whether or not the site contractor, whoever gets the bid on the site work, whether or not they'll land that next day or not. So we're uh, good. You know, we're getting uh, we're getting close. So excellent. You want to talk about this? Will, will there yeah. Be a ceremony? Don't they consider ceremony? No. Yeah. Okay. We don't do that kind of thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> They've ordered the silver shepherds already. <laughs> do you want to bring this up? Uh, yeah. Do you want to bring it up? Uh, I guess what, yes, uh, obviously last month we bought a one half undivided interest of a river lot and uh, uh, ran into Eileen, the owner of the other half, and ran into Eileen at the mill on, on Sun, on, I don't know, it must have been Sunday, Sunday, or the hell's the day? <laughs> Maybe it was yesterday, but anyway. So she came to, she came, actually it was on Sunday because she came to see me on Monday, talked about process, and, she, and I told her that what she needed to do was to make a proposal to the city council and uh, bring that back to me. And if you brought it back to me in the morning, uh, I would mention that to Bill, and I've, I've already taken this out of the envelope of the Senate. So I think what I'd like to suggest is a very, very brief executive session I hope it's a very brief executive session and then we can we can go in the kitchen. We don't need to climb up the stairs. We should be able to just go in the kitchen and come back out. Sure. It's a really relative to yeah, it a take, real estate. Uh, 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 I move we go into executive session. Second. Motion made and seconded. Okay. Okay. Let's go.
Bill, what I would uh, what I would like is I would like to make a recommendation that the City Council authorize the purchase of the of the other one half interest of the river lot uh, that is owned by the estate of Gregory Clark in the amount of ten for the compensation of the amount of ten thousand uh, dollars to come to be paid uh, out of the water county fund. Make said motion. Second. Randy, motion, we'll second. Any further discussion on this? It's the same price we paid for the other half interest. It gives the city an opportunity to own some river frontage that would help us to develop that, way that you further. Own it all, and that way you can't have problems with anyone else. Exactly. Yeah. In the in the you know in the grand scheme of things down the road, it's better to own all of it. Yep. Yeah. You're right. No more discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Great. Thank you. Does this mean? Joe, before I have a couple of things, do you want to talk about the toddler park? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna. If, if uh, sure I've got. I brought this too, Joe. If you wanted to. I've just got a few copies of this, so if you could return them, I'd appreciate it. And we may have to share. I got the, I got this set here, Joe, too. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll yeah. share with Mel or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a, I actually have a question for that, Mel. Um, my mother-in-law has a lease that was with the swimming pool property for her driveway that sits to the side. I know about that. It's a there's some kind of a driveway easement. Yeah, there's an easement there. Yeah, yeah and the part of that. And there's a drainage easement. I just I just want to know if this is going to impede on that. I certainly know about that easement. I do know about it, and uh, it, it certainly should not be uh, impeding on anything. But anyway, it's about getting that plotted on here to show what you where your mother-in-law's uh, property is and where that well, easement is shown. Right. You know, I I actually I know that I've researched it, but it'd be nice if it was indicated on on that plot so you know exactly where it was. Yeah, that yeah. way we don't have any questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right yeah. Um, so the Recreation Committee met on the 5th of, Jul not 5th of July, not the 5th of July, right, the 12th. And David Raphael presented, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, you have, you have a copy, right? Can everybody see? Uh, David Raphael just uh, presented us with some preliminary drawings for his ideas for the toddler park. And I've got a couple of sheets here that with some, some themes and so forth. But uh, just if you would please uh, turn to the, the third of the, of the sheet of the... Uh, the third sheet in the package. It's just sort of a, a, a schematic of what his idea of for the toddler park, which would um, be located in the grassy area between the swimming pool and East Street. So the swimming pool, if you, the, you can see the school parking lot is on the top of the drawing. The swimming pool would be to the right. East Street would be to the left. So basically, the, the some of the things that came out of the conversation with uh, parents that were interested at, at Bill's um, public forum were a, sort of a nautical theme and a destination type um, park and so you can see that he's got you know the center of it is a ship and he's got a, a drawing of it here on the, on the last page of the something like this these are all very preliminary uh, uh, ideas uh, the ship would have like a playhouse in it uh, uh, like a grade the and you can see the the um, little hills that would sort of emulate waves, um, little uh, rather hills uh, that would be constructed there. Um, have like a cargo net on one side, you can see in the drawing, a, a tire swing off of a bow spread in the front, it's kind of his thoughts. And then the other the other main component would be this, uh, this net climber, and I believe the next page then has some information on some of that stuff. So these are, again, these are just his uh, preliminary thoughts that he wanted to put out there. Um, I have not quite, uh, uh, Tara Brooks, who's one of our Recreation Committee members, was at the meeting. Excuse me. But we haven't had an opportunity as a committee to get together and discuss this, but I wanted to make sure everybody here saw kind of what the preliminary thoughts were. And um, he did give us some estimates as far as cost. His, I can find that. His, his sort of uh, 
armchair estimate, again, was a uh, rough estimate would be around $30,000 to build this, of which five to 6,000 were uh, materials. So again, the net climber, again, uh, maybe six to $8,000, depending on which model goes in. And then, you know, that certainly could be uh, reduced quite a bit through community involvement and in-kind sort of donations, et cetera, et cetera. So we're at a very preliminary stage, but uh, you know, I, I personally feel like this, this looks, if I was a, a five-year-old, I'd think this was look like a lot of fun. <laughs> but um, I thought everybody would like to see it, and I guess I don't, I guess I sort of need some consensus to move forward with further planning and, and uh, et cetera. I mean, this is obviously not anywhere near any kind of um, decision stage, but. Any discussion or questions of Joe? Any? Oh, I could say it, it looks good to me, and, yeah. and um, it is possible to have a community effort to build these things, because um, uh, I've gone through it before in another location where the, I think the toddler park was gonna cost $60,000. And um, we ended up spending far less than half that mm -hmm. because, uh, because of uh, carpenters and other community people who could donate their time and you bought the materials and, and, and I think we literally put it up in one day. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really possible and that's, that's actually I think that's a pretty low price. Yeah, that type of stuff. Better. Randy? Um, this will go between the fire lane, which I see depicted in the, in the picture number nine. Yeah, in the parking lot. In the parking lot, yeah. yeah. But uh, ideally, we'd like to move forward this fall and, and construct these wave like, or at least get some initial construction on that so that they can settle down and be ready to sense. finalize it in the spring. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say that it would be nice if we, you got to a point where we could put together some type of a timeline. Mm -hmm. But I think that makes a ton of sense to do yep. that this fall so it can settle. And then you can look at a schedule for construction in you know, late spring, maybe, depending on the weather, and have it available for the summertime if it works. So I would, I would recommend the committee continue to work on this and, and come back with us yep. at, each, at each, each phase. Mike, you have a question? Statement. I manage the Williston rest areas that have the rolling hills of Vermont. Yeah. And they are the worst things to try to mow. <laughs> so as long as you don't have too high of a wave, uh, you won't yeah, have a mower for, problem. Hopefully for toddlers. Uh, I know, but too much. <laughs> yeah. you, you'll end up having scalping problems with uh, monitors. <laughs> and we'll hear about that if that's the case, I'm sure. I have, I have one more Ready? comment. Um, thought. When they have a swim meet, this is their preferred parking spot, yeah. that green space. Understood, and that, that's been a, a consideration. And, you know, we thought that this was a, and, and that has been part of the conversation, but, you know, they can find somewhere else to park. Well, they, they park up the, you know, they park illegally on that street and in that, right. in that space. Yep. Uh, so it's just one of those Well, Well, that was definitely so, part of the conversation of where we we're gonna locate this. I think it's so a great idea, aware of it, don't yeah. get me wrong. It's Understood. a great idea. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, we'd, we'd like to engage the, the swim team you know, in, in this conversation, so. And that's only, you know, they, they, it's only a few evenings a Ideally. year. Ideally. Yeah. I mean, they can park at the high school. Right. I mean, uh, there has yeah, been, uh, well, let me see, I, I've already heard of, th I live close, so I hear the meets. Mm -hmm. I think it was, has been three so far already. Mm -hmm. So I don't well, know. Well, but, but you know who owns the pool now, don't you? Yeah, we do. <laughs> but we still want them to have, I'm not, I, I, I am for no, 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 this. No, I, I hear you. I am for yeah. this, it's just we have to consider yeah. what do we do with those vehicles. And that, and that should be part of the engagement of the pro planning process and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things that, you know, that, the, the, and I, I, I rarely miss a recreation uh, meeting, uh, you know, one of the things that we need to do is we really need to involve the neighborhood here, mm -hmm. you know, because yep. it's, it's really, uh, it's gonna be different, you know, this is a, there's some impact here mm -hmm. on that yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. And so everybody that lives around here, there ought to be a meeting, you know, specifically for the neighborhood. And so the, the, the recreation committee actually has kind of, they're getting a busy schedule here because they really need a neighborhood meeting about this project uh, and include school officials and everybody that's involved there. And then they have another neighborhood meeting that they need to do up on Comfort Hill as it relates to uh, the rail trail <laughs> project. So, uh, so I think you know the next the next meeting, Joe, really is about getting the getting those two meetings scheduled and held so that there's some community input, and then 
with that input, then we can come back to the city council. Are, are the same people working on both projects? No. Uh, I was going to say, is it going to make anybody. sense to prioritize one as opposed to the other? As a, well, we, we realize no. I, there's it? really nobody. The, the, the toddler park is kind of the, the main active active yeah. interest right now. The, the other, uh, the rail trail, we're sort of, sort of playing around the edges, trying to get a few kind of things in line before we really get to work on it. I guess, it, would that be a, a pretty good way to yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really need, the, the, we, the, the rail trail, we've, in essence, developed the alternative access routes, and we need to have the neighborhood involved with that process. And so that's, uh, it's a very, really should be a very focused meeting. It's, a, it's an access alternative as opposed to picking out, you know, um, playground equipment. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Uh, okay. Good. Great. Thank back. you. If I, if you don't, if you're welcome to keep them if you'd like to. Uh, uh, I'd like to have them back if you don't really want your office cluttered up. <laughs> well, I think you need them for the committee. Yeah, we do need. I, you know, I've got a few copies here. Now. Okay. Um, and just to wrap things up, a couple of comments. Um, French Heritage Day. I think it went pretty well. I was there in the morning for a couple hours. I don't know. If anyone else went during the day to go, it was, was, here, uh, it was a pretty nice day. Yep, yeah, and uh, so that was good. Um, I've gotten lots of comments, positive comments on the yield to pedestrian signs on Main Street. People really are glad they're there, and there's one back ordered, and I, Jimmy said it's coming next week. Good. Okay. I asked him if he had a if he had a um, timeline for for it, and he said next week. So hopefully that one's going to go on Green Street. Uh, just up from school, so all those three, you know, Main Street and Green Street will be, you know, um, protected a bit. Um, rubbish bins, we talked about a month ago at the meeting. Mel placed the order on July 1st, and we promptly found out that they were out of stock. <laughs> so, no yeah, so I uh, talked to my daughter, and and she said, I can't, I can't even put an order in. They're supposed to be restocked on August 8th. So they're supposed to email me on August 8th um, if they come in. And I got a coupon saying another 10% off if they're because they're back ordered. So we're hoping for that date. And and my, my actually my daughter is leaving the company August 2nd. Um, but she said, don't worry, I know plenty of people that can order it for the city. So hopefully we will have them in August is the plan. Um, and the last thing is I uh, wanted to thank Public Works for working on a Sunday night to paint the crosswalks. They had a perfect couple days and they got them all done. And I even saw, I, I saw the town clerk in Lincoln last week. She was having dinner at the Black Sheep on Sunday night, and she saw the city crew come up with their sweeper and their paint, you know, equipment and so on. She goes, what are they doing working on a Sunday night? And I said, they always work in pajamas. So they're the <laughs> wonderful crew. So thank you, Public Works Department. Um, so that's it. Anybody else have anything to talk about? Well, I was talking about <coughs> recycling. Yes. There have been, I was at recycling this weekend, there was a backup. I mean, I probably sat there for about six minutes before I could even move. Are they, are they supposed to like keep traffic going and so on? Who's that, like Joe Fortune? Yeah, they're supposed to, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, sometimes they're lax. And I've complained about it in the past too. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, they, where they have one of those orange things, you know, I think maybe they could even go up further so maybe two, two or three people could park up further and then they have to get out and carry their garbage that's the way it is one's right. recycling and one's garbage right? right is that the way it works and they're yeah. and they're, they're recycling garbage. and one is garbage and they're commingling they're so no they're i'm saying where they have their cones out that if they pushed it up further above their trucks they probably could park two or three more people there yeah yeah because they just sat there and sat there and, and the guy that was working for casella says we do the best we can he goes yeah there's, there's another option there to change that whole layout. I'd be more than happy to share with you both. Okay. Just a, as a, uh, the option is to do a complete wholesale move the whole operation somewhere else. You know, whether or not it's you know, at the within the wastewater treatment plant, you know, confines. That there's yeah. pro there's pros and cons of that. It's uh, you know, it's our our plan. You know, our municipal plan made reference to a task force and the, the, the group of me, Jimmy, and Cheryl, we've been concentrating on trash bins, so we get that out and that's the next hey, wait a minute, I did the trash bin. I know, okay, we'll give you credit for that. So, but anyway, that's, it really, it's, as it's turned out, it's just not 
Well, we know. need a new salt shed too, and that whole area needs to be kind of probably yeah. looked at. Yeah. But right now, if they had somebody standing on that corner, because you know, this like I told you, this woman just sat there, and I asked her, you know, if she just moved a little yeah. bit so we could get by, then she told me to bag it. So. <laughs> I would have hit her well, with my pocketbook. So you should have pulled out your pocketbook and. <laughs> we were well, let's. You know, maybe we can. Maybe we can talk to, to yeah. Joe or Dwight and just see if there's a way we can make it a little bit better. Then. I mean, we were kind of stuck there because of when the, the compactor was in use, but yeah. now without the compactor yeah, being used, no, yeah, well, could, the could, whole thing is mobile. You you move the whole have, thing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It doesn't need to be there. All right. Well, it let's be, let's see how it goes, town. and if we if we need to revisit it or or do I something more formally. Have a rage at the place. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be worse, and you can blame Ziggy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Yep. Motion. I will make the motion to second. Agree. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good night.